Hello, my name is Pony7, and welcome back to 705 with the Wolf Steel, and definitely 2.2.9 this time. Uh, so I'm, we had a bit of a snafu getting through Gibraltar, due to a mistake on my part, so um, we were sunk. However, new career, hopefully this time will go a little bit better. New campaign, of course, and our boat for this career shall be you. 506. And it's no space. There we go. And I'm not going to rely on RNG this time. I feel I need to get used to back to the uh, the um, controls of Center 5 and the TDC will steal. So in order to allow that to happen more likely, and less likely that we're going to run into lots of convoys, we're going to go to uh, Coastal Waters as our uh, start point for the career. Just so that um, I can get uh, reaccustomed to uh, the, the TDC controls and get back used to it. So I will do the normal starting procedure for a Wolves Steel campaign, and I'll bring you back on the uh, other side of that. Alright, welcome back. As you can clearly see, the crew are doing their normal and quite standard submerged test, although I think it's just the fact of how the game works, that the boat automatically uh, is uh, down below the surface, and it looks like that's a different flag than before. That's not the pirate flag. That's a different pirate flag. Alright then, we have a new pirate flag. Uh, interesting pirate flag. I kind of pretty old one, but uh, oh well. Uh, no, it is you. My you boat needs a few upgrades. Klar, was wünschen Sie? Uh, go for type two in large conning. We're gonna keep the deck gun. Sicher, was schwebt Ihnen denn vor? Because especially at this point in the war, uh, there should be no real armed Klar, merchantmen. Klar, was wünschen Sie? Klar, was wünschen Sie? The KDB is obviously well, GHG plus the KDB for uh, better coverage because it's a total of 360 degrees roughly same range but uh, more accurate reading which is obviously something we're going to do there is no decoys or radar re warning receivers at this point in the war and not many camouflages either and i'm not sure what what uh, emblem 506 had so i'm just going to go and pick one at random i'm going to pick the emblem of the sixth flotilla for our boat Camouflage. Let's go for the irregular stripes. Just that we have some nice tiger stripe ja, camouflage. Sie werden ihre Dame nicht mehr wiedererkennen, wenn ich mit ihr fertig bin. <laughs> yes, I'm, of course. Willkommen and zurück, Herr Kolon. What are my mission orders? Kommen Sie herein, Herr Kolon. Ich habe soeben neue Befehle vom OKM erhalten. Unsere Situation hat sich leider zum Schlechten gewendet. Sehen Sie, nach unserer Invasion Polens haben uns England und Frankreich den Krieg erklärt. Damit hat Berlin nicht gerechnet. Und das bedeutet, dass wir der mächtigsten Flotte der Welt gegenüberstehen, der Royal Navy. Ein ungleiches Duell, wenn man überhaupt von Duell sprechen kann. Die englische Flotte zählt 255 Kriegsschiffe, unsere bloß 34. Das heißt... Wir haben nur eine einzige Hoffnung. Unsere U-Boote. Unsere Feinde zwingen unsere Schlachtschiffe mit einer Seeblockade dazu, im Hafen zu bleiben. Oder die direkte Konfrontation zu suchen. Eine Situation, die wir uns derzeit keinesfalls leisten können. Nur mit kleineren Einheiten wie unseren U-Booten können wir die Blockade umgehen und auf die offene See durchbrechen. Wir haben zurzeit 46 U-Boote. Davon sind 22 gefechtsbereit. Sie werden eines davon übernehmen. Machen Sie das Beste daraus. Unser strategisches Gesamtziel, wie Commodore Dönitz es bereits erläutert hat, besteht darin, Englands Abhängigkeit von importierten Gütern auszunutzen, indem wir ohne direkte Konfrontation zuschlagen, alle Nachschublinien kappen 
und die Einwohner aushungern, bis der König... Ihr vorläufiges Ziel besteht darin, die wichtigsten Nachschublinien entlang der englischen Küste anzugreifen und größtmöglichen Schaden anzurichten. Konzentrieren Sie Ihre Angriffe in erster Linie auf ungeschützte Geleitzüge und Frachter. Damit durchtrennen wir die Nachschubadern des Feinds, bremsen die Produktion seiner Werften aus und reduzieren so seinen gesamten Schiffsraum. Schicken wir die Tommys zur Hölle, ohne dass sie eine Ahnung haben. Gute Jagd, Herr Kommandant. Good hunting indeed. Especially at this point. Because there'll be no organized convoys, so to speak of. Which means free meal. And in fact, it looks like we're starting off in the Baltic. Which uh, makes it's quite interesting. I don't think I've ever started off in this particular port. Attack shipping in Danzig Bay. Uh, intercept report the Polish task force. Very well. So, I'll get us out into the water, and then we'll talk about, as normal, the, his the actual boat that, uh, our namesake, effectively. So, we'll see you then. Right, welcome back. We are now, got our course all laid out. I've saved you from the, uh, many, many speaking of size of course. Uh, hopefully we're not going to hit that. Also, we need to adjust the uh, music volume. We'll see. And we appear to have gained some machine guns. I guess this is our defensive armament for the moment. These, these machine guns. Alright then. Uh, are we going to clear? Uh, yep, we're going to clear. Good. Would, would be embarrassing to hit ourselves on the first patrol back out. And there's a Romani Romanian ship. I believe, Romanian. Possibly. Either way, our boat, U-506, she was ordered on the uh, 25th, 25th of September, 1939, laid down on the 11th of July, 1940, at uh, Dristig Wolf AG Hamburg, wreck number 296, launched on the 20th of June, 1941, as a Type 9C. Commissioned on the 15th of September, 1941, under Captain Lieutenant Ernick Wunderman, Knight's Cross. Uh, Ernick was her only commanding officer. She did five patrols. From the 15th of September to the 31st of January, 1942, she was part of the 4th Lithuania in training. And then from the 1st of February, 1942 to the 12th of July, 1943, she served in the 10th Flotilla in active service. 14 ships sunk for 69,893 gross tons, 3 ships damaged for 23,358 gross tons, and one ship, which was so damaged had to be written off as a total loss upon return to port, for 6,821 tons. She was sunk at 1550 hours on the 12th of July 1943 in the North Atlantic, west of Virgo, Spain, in position 43 minutes, 43, 42 degrees 30 minutes north, that's how it goes. 16 degrees 30 minutes west by seven death charges from a U.S. Liberator aircraft, 1st Anti-Submarine Squadron, U.S. Army Air Force, C. 48 dead, six survivors. And then the boat was located via an SC-137 10 centimeter radar, which the Germans couldn't detect, probably because either they didn't have Metox, or they decided quite foolishly that Metox was telling the allies where their boats were, which is the exact opposite of what was happening. And so they didn't have uh, anti-radar stuff. So 15 men were seen in the water after the boat broke in two. The attacking pilot dropped a life raft and smoke flare to assist the survivors. Six men were picked up from the sea by a British destroyer on the 15th of July, three days after sinking. And there we go. Hopefully we won't suffer the same fate being sunk by aircraft, but you never know. Sometimes things go horribly wrong. So, as is normal, I will break things off here, and I will bring you back once we encounter the enemy. So I will see you then. Déjà éteint l'incendie. Un petit 
tour et fini un petit coup et puis Merci, je t'avais dit, c'est pas pour la vie Juste pour une nuit, un peu de folie Pauvre ami, rien compris, ben tant pis, tiens par Allez, va mon gars, c'est ça, le temps n'attend pas back and down scope a little bit because we just got shot by the coastal defense batteries we are currently sitting and outside the port in Danzig whose coastal defense batteries don't like us oh, that coastal defense battery right there it was just tough to that was there just enough so that we can See, there we go. Freighter. It's not an old freighter. It's not the penguin. Mm. No, different uh, structure. The stack's not big enough in that one for the one on the right. Nope. It's not that. Neither of them are that. I think this is this. So, range TDC. It is at two, four, six, seven. So seven on here, seven on the inner one. Mass height of 30, 1,700-ish, give or take. We can lock that in, speed zero. Now let's open to one, tube two, and tube three. We'll probably give two to you and one to you. Uh, angle and bow. That's right, it doesn't give you a, a track angle. That looks kind of right. Maybe a little bit more like 120. Yeah, about 120 because that's 45 degrees ish off. Uh, to do draft of 7.9, set you to go at. Torpedo tiefer eingestellt auf 4 Meter. 4.9 meters. Wird geschlossen. Rohr 1. Wird bewässert. Torpedo tiefer eingestellt auf 4. Rohr 2. Feuern. Rohr 2. Rohr 1. Los. Rohr 1. Wird geschlossen. You. Your angle on bow is. Thirty degrees off the bow is not forty five, so we'll call it thirty. So to find you though. Uh 
one stack. It's not a tramp steamer. It's not an express freighter. It's not a parcel freighter. No, she's she's a coal freighter. There, and then tallest mast. Which is twenty. I'm gonna go with the tallest mast. Which was six. Six and 28.7 is 1,900. Torpedo Treffer! Torpedo Treffer! Here we go. Uh, two good impacts on that one. Good, and there goes the cranes, and she's actually split in half. Hopefully her uh, stern end doesn't back into the torpedo. That would be a little bit of a shame. Uh, torpedoes, let's get the reload going. A little bit cheaty, just because they're, sit they're sitting still and all that, but it does give me another chance to uh, practice with the TDC again. Also, down scope. Yeah. Let's track this torpedo. Where are you, Mr. Torpedo? I've lost it. <laughs> Alright, yeah, when there's a red flare. Oh, there it is there. Yep, yeah, that should clear our, uh, our sunk friend here, who is very, very dead. She has been split clean in two. In fact, I think they both hit, uh, Right about center on her, which must have blown her boilers, I guess. Oh, that's a that's a life raft. Is it? No, that's just a piece of material on the a piece of debris. Now well, let's see what happens to our other friend here, our Mr. Coal Freighter. She should sink. I mean, it's not. She's a lot smaller of a ship than the uh, freighter over there was, and the freighter over there blew up uh, pretty pretty quickly. Of course, this torpedo is also set to uh, shallow, comparatively. Where has it gone? Oh, it's right here. Yep, that's going to hit. Almost exactly right where I aimed it. So that was a good angle and solution. That's good. Good practice, even though it's a bit cheaty. But definitely good practice. Torpedo Fazaga. It just bounced. I guess that uh, that ship's lucky. I guess she's very, very lucky. A bad angle to have attacked her at. I guess I got lucky then that these ones actually detonated. And there she goes, uh, burning quite fiercely, and the uh, stern half's already basically sunk, as well as the bows. But she didn't take long to go down. But we'll close that out. And we'll head away from port. I head standard. We got. Don't have to really worry about any destroyers or anything. We'll head out this way. And then see what we can find out in this area. However, the Dresden, the Dresden and her escort destroyers are in the area, so. Uh, you never know. We might get nothing. Uh, C-1B, type medium merchant, 6,700 tons. Not quite the exact same ship that I pegged her as, but fairly good start to the career. You know, 6,000 tons. So, I will break things off here, and I'll bring you back once we encounter something else. So, I'll see you then.